Welcome to the Old Fashioned Masonic Podcast, where we talk all things Masonic while drinking an old fashioned. I'm Brian. And I'm Russ. Russ, who is our long haired chap in the I, middle of us today? Our, our, our uh, Fabio in the works. Wow. I, like I tell that. you what, we have Brother Alex Rozell here to visit with us today on the podcast. So, those who have seen his promo headshots as we're coming up through the week, you're like, well, okay, you can pull it off. I couldn't pull it off, yeah. so uh, I'm, I'm glad to, uh, glad that you're here. So, question. Have you ever watched any of the episodes? Absolutely. I'm Have a big fan of the show. All of them? All right. uh, I think all of them. Okay, well, yeah, you just never know, right? So, so, Do you think they're getting better? Do you think they're... So, I, what's I your think opinion? that they're getting better, yeah. you know, and I think that... Those the, first uh, couple were a little rough. Well, we were in the dungeon. Yes. <laughs> we were in the dungeon. The camera was on us. So you saw our blood pressure and or our... Uh, that, that we drink a little bit too much and it's showing in our skin. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's so, fair. Alex, as you'd know, we like to know on this podcast, we want to know more about the man sure. and not just the mason. So take out the Masonic stuff. Who is Alex Roselle, the man? Well, I, I appreciate you guys having me on today. Uh, I was really looking forward to uh, today. Um, as far as who I am, uh, I am a husband. I am a father. Um, have three children, uh, two boys and a girl. Uh, my wife, Maxie, at home, too. Um, and they occupy the vast majority of my time. Awesome. Um, As and, they should. Uh, yeah. And we're at that, that fun age where, you know, when one kid's crying, the other one's finding something new to jump off of. And, and uh, it's, a, it's a fun time. It really tests my blood pressure. But uh, it... Uh, You're young. You can what are their ages? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So... Uh, six, four, and two. Oh, by, the time, yeah. by the time this comes out, they'll be six, four, and two. Yeah, there awesome. we go. Awesome. Got two kids that were born on the same day. Okay. Not okay. twins. Not twins. All there right. we go. All right. We timed nice. it that way. We're that okay. good. So you grew up in what city? Grew up here in Wichita. Um, uh, went to Wichita Collegiate for um, all my schooling. Then uh, I always say that I'm a Kansan by birth, but a Jayhawk by the grace of God. Hold on, uh, to your, hold on to your vomit. <laughs> uh, so went to KU. That's where I became a, a Freemason. Which we'll and, talk about later. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, came back to, to Wichita, um, got married, had kids, and uh, and became a guest on the Old Fashioned Sonic I, Podcast. Do you have an occupation? Do you work or are you a kept man? I, I do work. Great uh, question. <laughs> I love the way you practice that. I am a director of sales for a um, telemedicine company out of California. Okay. And Very uh, good. yeah, that uh, um, something I'm really passionate about. Been been in the in the space for um, oh probably double digit years now, um, yeah. and uh, I really enjoy what I do. Good. Perfect. So that that's I think that's going to surface again. Yeah. So you know um, now we know a little bit about the man. So let's do talk about. You as a mason, so sure. just start from the beginning and to today. So yeah. fill it in. Sure. So I think my first kind of interaction with with Freemasonry, my grandfather always always wore his Masonic ring as his wedding ring. I remember asking him questions about it when I was a kid, uh, and he would kind of give me little, uh, you know, uh, trinkets little, of information. Trinkets of information yeah, okay. that, that didn't really make sense at the time. Um, he wasn't active really when I knew him, but it was still obviously a big part of his life, you know, that he would wear the ring. Um, I, uh, I went to KU, uh, joined a fraternity at KU and really loved that experience. Loved kind of the, um, fraternal bond, kind of the, uh, the, um, nostalgic side, kind of the historical side, the esoteric side. Um, and I had a fraternity brother of mine, a guy named Dan Inslee, um, who, after I was initiated into the fraternity, um, we were out, uh, not drinking beer on our, on our back porch. Uh, and he brought up Freemasonry. Uh, and he said, you know, have you ever, have you ever heard about it? Have you ever thought about it? And I, I kind of was like, well, no. And he said, well, you know, you take our college fraternity, 
um, and you know multiply that by about a million, um, and you know, okay. take our our history and multiply that by by a million and ritual uh, yeah, and ritual, ritual um, and uh, meaning and, and effect and um, I was hooked. Um, he and another fraternity brother of mine who were both Masons, Chris Armstrong, they helped me petition. Um, Acacia Lodge number nine in Lawrence, Kansas. Who is the most famous alum to come out of Acacia Lodge in Lawrence? Oh man! Uh, so our our sister lodge is Lawrence Lodge number nine, and and the two lodges kind of are are fight over that. Kind of. Yes. So who is this person we refer to? Uh, uh, none other than the inventor. Of basketball, Doctor James Naismith. Is that right? For, uh, for those who are watching, I don't know if they knew that. So, so Alex, Alex has the sev- uh, six degrees of separation of Kevin Bacon with uh, Doctor James Naismith. <laughs> so oh, wow, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so, but point of clarification: he was Lawrence Lodge number six, not Acacia Lodge number nine. Okay, okay. there we go. So that uh, that kind of was the very beginning of my Masonic journey, where. Masonry kind of started really blooming was after my initiation. Okay. Um, and I was paired with a mentor, a guy named Tom Braley. Um, and uh, um, he uh, passed last year, but, uh, you know, we would meet probably two, three days a week um, and and study and, and go over um, uh, questions and answers and um, that was kind of the, my, my home lodge was, you know, when I went through, kind of took the older school approach to it where you had to prove up after each degree. And I, I couldn't be more thankful that that was my experience going through with a very small, very intimate lodge uh, of, of guys. Um, so I was very blessed to have that opportunity and to do that with Tom. Um, but we would go fishing together. We would, we would, uh, I remember he had cancer at the time and I'd, I'd go visit him at the hospital and he would, and we would, we would, uh, uh do questions and answers at the hospital. Okay. Uh, oh, so, wow. you know, I had, I had these yeah. gym memories of just quality, quality time in Lawrence that I, that I spent with that, with that mentor. And that's, so you know, then you come to Wichita. So then I come to Wichita. Thank you. Um, and I, I had been to Pike once while I was in college when I came back um, and was really excited to you know join the the largest uh, lodge in in the world or the United States is it the world the United States uh, uh, now it's the United States back into the United States we we were we lost it we're back oh right on uh, so really excited to join uh, you know notable guys when I when I joined this man to my left right here uh, big personality, very notable. I, very I, I've notable. invented nothing, created nothing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, infamous might be a better infamous. Uh, I will go with that. Flamboyant, sure. <laughs> Flamboyant. We'll we'll go with that as well. We'll go with that as well. Hey, hold on. This is not the gang up on bird show. Back to so you came to Easy. Pike. Yeah. So so you came to Pike and you're a master mason already. Yep. Had you got your B card already? Yes. Okay, and so you you graduated, you come to Pike, you start working. I think you're selling. Are you selling liquor at the mm-hmm. time? Yep. Yeah. Right. Yep. And you are you a plural or did you transfer your membership? How did that work? So I think it took me probably about a year to to kind of get everything in order and and, yeah, and, it wasn't and quite do that sure process. Yeah. Uh, I was a dual member for for many years. Um, and uh, uh, became a perpetual life member of Albert Pike in um, oh, 2017, uh, 2016. Uh, but, uh, you know, the biggest thing that I remember coming to Pike from Acacia Lodge number nine was just the amount of degree work and, and the precision that was involved in planning that and executing that. Uh, just the amount of guys that would, you know, volunteer to do like the stair lecture, right. you know, um, and, and Lawrence, it, we had to kind of grab from a little, you know, what's well, a population density thing right. as well. Mm-hmm. However, we, there are nine lodges in Wichita compared, you know, with the, yeah. it'd be, it should yeah. be interesting to mathematically, if that makes sense, that, that argument that I'm throwing out, but yeah. Yeah. 
A lot of people were on the work. So I'm going to go completely off script because this has nothing to do with you per se. Sure. But because you became a Mason in Lawrence and we talk a lot about history, I don't know this answer to this question. But during the Civil War. Oh, shit. And Here we go. Quantrill Raiders came in and burned Lawrence. Did a Masonic Lodge burn during that time? Not to my knowledge. Um, and you bring up a great... Uh, uh, That's really good. Uh, time in history wow. that uh, is well documented by a brother of ours, a, a former Grand Master of ours, Grand Master Michael Halloran, yeah. uh, wrote a fantastic book uh, about Freemasonry and the Civil War, although he doesn't talk much about Kansas Freemasonry. Uh, a book by the name of Better Angels of Our Nature. Correct? Right? Plug? Plug? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, fantastic. If you're interested in, in, in masonry and the Civil War, it's a great book. Check it out. He'll fact check it and it'll be at the bottom. Look yeah. at the bottom. So we're, right we're good. Right yeah. on. Uh, so the, the story that I remember about kind of the inception of Lawrence Freemasonry is, is when they... I remember it was a handful of guys that had to prove to each other that they were in fact Masons and they met down by the river uh, and examined each other one by one. Uh, right. took, took a long time. Uh, and then, you know, after that, after they proved each other, they, they circled Good. up and started yeah. Lawrence Lodge number six. Yeah. And it's very similar to uh, uh, George Washington's Continental Army. Yeah. You know, he, he only surrounded himself with Masons because, you know... Yeah. Let's say it was daylight, or if it wasn't daylight, he could yeah. he could identify the Masons. Yeah. You know, there's this kind of a thing with yeah. that. So, sure. so you were on the line at Pike. We know why you stepped off because you know there, we're not going to give away a lot of secrets. So, but there is a message that you get right when you come in is basically how to balance your time. Sure. Yeah. Right. So, where were you at when you stepped off? Sure. So I uh, I was never a, a part of the the uh, I was a part of the appointed line. Right. Um, but where were you on the appointed line? Was it? Do you remember? Uh, in the Grand Lodge or in the local lodge? Local. Uh, would have been. At Pike. Would have been Junior Steward. Junior Warden, because Gracie stepped into that spot. You were Junior Warden. Oh, that's right. You were Junior Warden. You were on your way to be the master. You were in the soft chairs. I don't. Was, I don't. I don't think you're remembering what? that correct. I, I. I know. I remember because that Gracie was, took your spot. Yeah, I do remember that. And yeah. Gracie is behind who? Ward. Mm. -mm Con. Con. So you were in the soft chairs as you, as you worked your way through. So it was Bird, Ward, Con, Gracie. Yeah. So did he? Cause, so, so it was always a debate. In our, there was always a debate in our lodge because you came off. Gracie put Diddy or, or um, Diddy put Gracie on. I was so pissed because did uh, uh, Grace was going to be one of my guys. Like, but he ended up being. So you would have been my senior deacon. Yeah. So Gracie was my senior deacon. Yeah. So on that, I remember. I know the qu answer to the question. So, uh, but <laughs> so glad you do. So, uh, who put you on the line, Pike? Uh, that would have been. Were you one and done, or were you on a couple of years? I was not on. I was. Were you on two? I was on an appointed. I had an appointed position. Well, yeah, we're only yeah, talking. Yeah, you were yeah, only yeah, talking yeah. appointed. Uh, it would have been one year. You were only on one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, I would debate the the. I don't think. Yeah. I don't think I, he's right. He's a hundred percent was junior. Gracie, you've already been on. You've watched this. You know you took his spot because I threw a fit on the office. It's the hair. It's it, my. They wouldn't. They wouldn't let my hair. No, that's there. not the true. He, he. That's not true. He. He stepped out. So you're saying Diddy initially put you on, or Stan Howard put you on? Because uh, that would have mean meant you would have started at senior steward and then went to junior warden. I don't know been, that would have been Howard. So you were steward and then went to ward. So you were on to one and a half years. Yeah. Okay. So Howard, Howard got him. I tell you what, you're hammering him with a lot of questions. It was a hundred years ago. And since then, his estrogen level in his house is a little higher than it used to be. And so he has, he two, may ma not he has two males. I have only estrogen. I, have a, I had girl dogs. 
My my toilet seats are bolted down. I don't want to hear anything about are you, estrogen. Are you, are you frustrated? Yeah, no, I, I'm amped up are, now. You're, you're it's, it's my estrogen level. Frustrated. <laughs> it's my estrogen level. Yeah. Easy, okay. easy, Betty. Get back. Get back to work. Whew, I digress. So your brother's a mason, <laughs> and, and we won't tell too many. So talk to talk to us about the feeling of having watched your older brother. Yeah. Being raised as a master mason. You know, my older brother was there when I went through my college fraternity uh, uh, initiation. Okay. That was a special moment, too. Um, and to be kind of on the other end and have those roles switch okay. was was pretty special. What house were you in? Uh, give him a shout-out. Sure. Pi Kappa Phi. Okay. PKP. Uh, and, you know uh, me. You know me. Um, and uh, That's that OPP reference from Naughty by Nature. You were out of college by then. Wow. <laughs> Just going to say. Shout out to Naughty by Nature and Tretch. Yeah. Tretch used to go out with Peppa of Salt and Peppa. True story. So there we go. Anyway, I digress yet again. I, I've got a lot of useless stuff up here. Yeah, so that was that was a great experience. Um, you know, it, it uh, he was super busy at the time, so we didn't get spare, spare, you know, have a lot of uh, lodge time together. But, you know, to be able to have that experience was was uh was pretty special definitely one of the uh, masonic experiences that i you know will remember for a long time you know me too for that so we're going to talk off camera we played a little bit of a prank on his brother do you remember the (laughs) prank i don't oh <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry about that, boys. I can't cut it out, but it was. We're going to tell Russ about this yeah. later. So, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. So, <laughs> so you became a Mason in Lawrence. You mm-hmm. proved up in Lawrence, and you came back to Wichita. Why'd you pick Pike? You know, I. It started when, so one of the things that I did with my college fraternity, and this was a few pounds ago, uh, was I rode my bicycle no from, from from San Francisco to Washington, D.C. for our college philanthropy. Yeah. And and you raise money to do it. Um, and I came to Pike uh, one one break uh, to, to uh, you know, talk to you guys about it and to, you know, um, you know see if anybody was interested in, in donating. Uh, so I'd been to Pike before. Okay. Uh, I had also, when I was still proving up at uh, at Acacia Lodge during breaks, I would meet with Jimmy Craig. Uh, Jimmy at, Craig, uh, yeah. At, at See Albert him Pike. soon, folks. He's coming. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, I'm excited for that episode. That will be, I hope you guys schedule an extra hour for that. Well, we're giving him two. We're going to give Jimmy Craig, Jimmy Craig. But we're going to give Jimmy Craig the importance of study club, Jimmy Craig. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hope, hope you got some warm beer available. Yeah, no me. kidding, right? Uh, yes. But, uh, oh, that's right. We can do that. He's a warm beer It guy. is, or we do remember that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, I had some familiarity with, with Albert Pike um, and, and some of the guys there. Um, when I came uh, to Pike during college, Doc was the, was the master there. Uh, and he is a very welcoming Welcoming yes, dude, you bet. Uh, and you know it. Uh, uh, so, uh, it, you know, I had a lot of familiarity with with the lodge, it just, and it just felt it just fit. It felt yeah. right. I mean, it. Okay. Uh, you know, I really didn't consider um, any other lodge. I, mean, I don't mean that in a, as a slight to, to the other lodges around. It's it's what just, you know uh, is what you're comfortable. Sure, with. yeah, and, gra- and so, gravitated to. Yeah, very glad that I made that decision. So, do you have any aspirations? So we, we, we've heard that you have 17 kids between the ages of 11 and zero and a half. <laughs> so any aspirations to go back on the line at Pike or even get on the line at the Shrine? I would love to. I would love to. I uh, We know guys, so you just got to let us know. <laughs> so you need to give us the timeline. We know people. We know, we know people. <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, you know, right at this stage in my life uh, with, you know, kids – at, at the ages that they are, um, you know, I think you're, I think you're six to seven years out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Probably right um, when we need you. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and I, I absolutely have, uh, aspirations. I, I love the blue lodge. Uh, that is, that is my foundation and, uh, what I get excited about, uh, what I love to talk about, what I love to read about. Um, and you know, I would love to, um, 
serve in that capacity uh, however everybody sees fit. And if it, yeah. if it uh, means, you know, working my way up the line, then I, I would love to do that. Um, and we'll, we'll talk to somebody if we have any yank and we, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll try to start you back soft. <laughs> yeah, don't wait too long. Um, the fraternity needs you. So uh, yeah, I, I would, would try not that. to. I'll yeah. try not to. So um, tell us about any other involvements with appended bodies. Do you sure. Know? Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about uh, uh, my appointment to uh, worshipful, uh, right worshipful uh, Rick Reichert's uh, line. That would have been in 2012. Was 20 it line. Reichert's line or was it Halloran's line? Uh, Reichert's line, Halloran gave me the tap. Okay. Um, so uh, Halloran was uh, senior warden, Reichert was. Uh, okay. Grandmaster. Okay. Um, so I that experience was was phenomenal. Um, being able to um, pop into uh, you know small lodges across the state and and being a part of as a uh, very young face. as a very very young face. Uh, I mean, would you have been twenty two at the time? Yeah, probably twenty two, twenty three. Yeah, um, and uh, I mean, we weren't even Masons at that time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was at twenty two or twenty three. No, oh, at, oh, <laughs> at the age I was, yeah, I was there while he was doing that. You hear, yeah, you're hearing easy, goes, Betty. You're hearing goes first, boys and girls. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are brutal. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, so that that was a fantastic experience. Uh, I got to spend a lot of time with Mike Halloran, uh, guys like Bob Talbot, who is mm-hmm. a, a, a big. Mentor of mine and a great uh, friend of ours, yes. great friend yeah. of yours. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love, love just soaking it in from yeah. from yeah. from Bob, and uh, so that was a fantastic experience. Uh, right after I was raised at, at Acacia, I uh, joined the Lawrence Valley the Scottish Rite. Okay. Uh, I have not uh, switched my membership okay. yet. Um, uh, one of these days, uh, came to uh, Wichita, came to Pike, uh, and. Everybody and their mama, well, not their mama, but everybody was in the shrine. Everybody. Today at the shrine, it is their mama. Yeah. We, we, yeah. yeah, well, that's true. We were pimping the shrine like crazy oh, back big in time. the day. I mean, it was almost like, oh, you're not a shriner? <laughs> I mean, we kind of put that off on folks and, and uh, anyway. So. Well, you know, it's a good thing that I've got calluses on my feet because that sand was well, it was scorching hot. They've been they're, out yeah. in the sun they're, all day. You know, they, you know. And, and you know what they they do much better about whoa easy Betty did you see that they do much better about uh, cooling those down now. yeah so, yeah all right so fast forward if you are a master of the lodge today sure you're the city master today what is the one thing that you must accomplish to call your your successful the one thing I would I would so the the biggest impact for me. Uh, at Acacia was having a designated mentor, mm-hmm. okay. uh, somebody that the lodge had selected to um, meet with me, check on my progress, uh, and just you know be uh, you know so my an companion. improved mem- uh, mentorship program. Somebody talked Stan Howard into putting the M's. Mm-hmm. Is that you? Oh, I, I remember making a big fuss about it around then. Uh, not a big fan of the of the of the M badge, but like, but the know, essence was there. The essence was there, and and we at, at Acacia Lodge, you know, we didn't have 20, 30 guys joining, 40, 50 guys joining the lodge every right. year. We had right. two or three, right. maybe four. Right. Um, but, but let me be fair. If we've got fifty guys joining or three, our men- mentorship program sucks. Let's can we just be honest about that? That's fair. As a whole. There's probably a few here or there where yeah. you find somebody that yeah. you gravitate to. It's like, oh, I'll take the long hair. I've got Alex, right? And you'll do the different things. Right. But I think in theory we're there. But our execution on the mentorship at, side, at, I think at it times, sucks. I think, I think we have glimmers of hope and we, we start to do things and then you sort of fade. And it, and it always and it just doesn't seem like we ever master it really well. If you're watching and you're a lodge master or officer work. Work on your membership program because we're we're caught part of the biggest baddest lodge out there, and our our mentorship sucks. That's fair. Overall, yeah. It it, it wasn't great when I was a master. Would you have call it? Would you have given yours an A? No. 
I might have given mine a C, maybe. C's get degrees. Maybe. Well, at maybe. Lawrence. What, what, what did... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the poster boy for C's get degrees. <laughs> You know, D, for, I, D for diploma, you, baby. I, you, you know what they you know what they call the guy that graduated the bottom of medical school, right? Doc, doctor. doctor. Yep. Here we go. That's right. <laughs> so for us, you're back on. Buddy. <laughs> so sorry about that, Rensner. So you're a member of Albert Pike. Yep. So yep. what? What past master? And we're we're always digging for compliments. So if it's uh, not at least one of the two of us, we you know, you went around we're, this we is never going to be one. aired. But uh, past master of Albert Pike that inspires you? Sure. Uh, I'd have to go with the sexiest, and that would be uh, Chris Collins. Ooh, uh, nice. And uh, wow, yeah. a little bit of a dick move. Yeah, but that, I like yeah. it. but, uh, uh, but in, in all seriousness, uh, uh, you know, I, I love, and I'm going to stick with Chris here. Uh, even though I didn't get to spend a heck of a lot of time in your lodge during during your year, uh, you know. What I appreciate about Chris is, you and you'll know, see Chris on in two episodes. You'll see Chris come up. Sure. So sorry if I. Uh, yeah, there you go. You're, the good. You're, good. You're good. You're uh, good. You're good. But uh, it, you know, our generation is is kind of new to to the watch, and mm-hmm. to see somebody that has, you know, gone through the line, you know, at our age, and and is is it just is on fire about. Uh, the fraternity today, as as he was it's when fair. you know he came through the lodge, uh, it's it's inspiring to watch. It's inspiring to see. Um, but uh, I mean, it's it's hard to put your finger on one uh, because Rensner was a he was a hot topic for me. Oh yeah, I wanted to be Rensner. Yeah, he just brought that. Sure. He just brought that stank. Yeah, I yeah. yeah, yeah. Big time the stank. So, all right. Do you have any funny stories, either something that happened in Lodge or before or after Lodge that stands out or any good times? Because if you don't, you, d- you do. You do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I'm going to be very cryptic for you. Sure. Uh, I, I'm trying to think of how I can say this, uh, this being a, a public podcast so here. Figure it out. Yeah. Uh, figure it so out. You're, you're a smart, smart boy. You'll sure. figure it out. So one of the things... You, when you are when you become a mason, you know part of becoming a mason is is uh, learning to trust in others, right? Okay. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, when you're becoming a mason, you're in darkness. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And sometimes you need to be led by the hand. Sure, you do. Um, and uh, sometimes, if if you don't have uh, somebody who is, um, hmm, how do, uh, I don't know, Vo- voice it, but be careful. You want to make sure that when you're one of those people that's that's leading another, if you're person, guiding someone through, yeah, uh-huh. if you're guiding somebody through that, that you look out for obstacles, uh, <laughs> like uh, pillars and, and things like that, and and that you don't uh, run them into uh, these things when they are uh, not as uh, at at uh, their. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, yeah. That, so, that, sorry, that during their guidance. Does that negate the trust? Yes. So yeah. I appreciate that story. So I was going to go out there. I'm going to be a little cryptic. Do it. Do it big. So at Pike, we used to have our dinner before, do a great meeting, epic as Doc would say. Then we'd go to a little, little this little dive bowl called the Shamrock. Yeah. What time we were there, and I think there might have just been three or four of us. And I don't know anything about tree trimming. <laughs> so but that was a great time. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go on to the next question, Russ. <laughs> Quiet down. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's uh, it's an important piece of So uh, you've watched enough things to know that uh, basically at the end of the day, he just comes up with questions and and they just pop up the screen and i can i just have to basically go off his you have, you have not followed all of the questions don't even ever, try it. ever don't so even try it the question is uh if you had a magic wand what's the one thing that you would do to just increase masonry to expand masonry but before you answer that if I remember right, the first I heard of you, 
So I was a past master. I'd sort of just flowed into other... He was 11 years before me. He was a young one. So I hear... Alex Rizal, have, have you met Alex Rizal? Oh, the, the he, he, noise. He was a hot ticket. He was a hot ticket. He was a hot ticket. But what I remember hearing about you He was, was the bird before Russ Brown. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember hearing that you had a passion about college fraternities and thinking and tr- d- developing or doing something to where why... Is Freemasonry today in Kansas not tapping each and every college fraternity for the next level of... uh, Is that not a fairly decent step? How bad are we crap in the bed? Big time. Big time. Okay. Because Uh, why? I think that, you know, in Wichita, we we are blessed. At Albert Pike, we are blessed to have the membership that we do, to have the... Uh, uh, difference, you know, have a, a bunch of people of different ages, youth, uh, manhood, and age. Um, I like yeah, it. I like, I like it. Uh, I like it. You did and uh, you get yourself in trouble. Uh, uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, in in a lot of other uh, lodges, that's that's not the case. Um, and I think that there's something to learn from every lodge uh my my home lodge um is you know but it's a these, college town yeah it's a college town but these guys you know if you walk into their doors and you say that you want to become a mason they will invest themselves in you right they will they will do whatever they need to do to make sure that you are a productive um uh, mason that that loves the craft but they gotta have and that they have to come to you first though and that's beautiful Right, but that's that's, that's you. But yeah, that's that's the other side. Lafayette is, should be killing it in in at K oh, State. Yes. you know, and and so that's the other side. And so, uh, you know, what are what are they doing about outreach? You know, I, I look over here. That's that's that's. Listen. You know, it uh, it could it could be better. There's Zero. room. There's room for improvement. And you know what? As good masons. And, and, and to be talk. fair, to be fair, I haven't been I haven't been up there in a long time. Right. So so if there's anybody from Acacia listening, I you know uh, you guys are a fantastic lodge. Uh, and but, have a piece but, of my heart. But as Masons, we have to kind of call out our weaknesses. Sure. Yeah. So that's to, a great to point. walk on nice to, Yeah. So to actually be a part of that college fraternity life and to go into those fraternities to promote masonry, we have got to seek. The young Masons mm-hmm. that have been through that to be a part it's of fresh. it. Yeah, it's fresh. Yeah, you, you don't want some seventy-year-old dude trying to recruit sure. uh, fraternities. Yeah, it, it you just don't work. speak their language. You don't. And, and frankly, we don't speak no the college fraternity language. No, right? You're you're about to come out of that. Yeah, you you think you're there? Yeah, right. Yeah. Like you're about to come out yeah. of that. Yeah. I mean, it, it's... Yeah. I, so, I still yeah. got it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, like and, it. until you cut your hair and then you won't again. <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> okay, so the most important question of the day, we always end with the podcast with one must go. Okay. You're a KU grad, so I want you to pay attention to the screen. Oh, one must go forever. Oh my. And you know what? I bring the stank. So, on the screen, as everyone can see, you've got Danny Manning, oh. Mario Chalmers, Paul Pierce and Wilt Chamberlain, one has to go forever. You know, Alex, you're a smart guy. I'd like to give you a little tough one. One has to go. It's easy for me. Yeah, it's easy for me, too. I know, I know who it's going to be. One has to go forever. So hold on before you answer. I know me. one you sh- uh, yeah, should never go. So, but Well, hold on. That's not is. fair. One has to go forever. Who are you cutting loose? And, and we're going to debate this one. The answer is is not an easy one to come by. And I know that, I, that I, knew, I knew my answer. Uh, the answer is Danny Manning. And I, you lost the championship with them, though. It, it, I, that so, means your 1988 is gone. It, it, that's that's fine. You know, we we still have Mario and the shot heard, heard around the world. Right. Uh, uh, I still remember where I was. I was at I was at the Hawk. I, I was remember working. that that was the San Antonio Final Four. Yeah. And, and you know who he did it against? What team? Memphis. Memphis. He got he 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 got the uh, next year's Rookie of the Year for yeah, Chicago. Bulls. He was sick. It was that was that was a crazy time. Crazy uh, time. And and Will Chamberlain, I mean, 
like that's that's I not would, even an option to let go. No. I would I would have cut Paul Pierce out. Paul Paul Pierce has got to stay on because that's that's who I remember when yeah. I was a kid. So, but Paul know, Pierce playing, was a great NBA ball. player, not not great in college. But Danny won you. Danny won you a championship. Mario won you a championship. Yeah. Paul Paul's got to stay in there. He's got he 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 you has the nostalgia a, spot. Manny and the miracle. And oh, by the no. way, it's yeah. his choice, not yours. Who would you got rid of? I don't care. You're a K-State guy. Yeah. What you got rid of? Answer the question. Oh, I'd have gotten rid of Danny Manning because... <gasps> oh, oh, did, oh, yeah, because I, I forgot the team. I was during... I was in... Oh, you no, know, you so were. So I watched him that, play. Was that your first I watched him, sophomore year? Uh, that would have been my junior year. 88. 88, yeah. Sophomore. Sophomore. So, yeah, it's like, sophomore. wait a minute. I, Sorry. I'm sophomore. I'm decent year. at math. You're the yeah. banker. Yeah. Correct me. Yeah. <laughs> so, easy, buddy. That's all we have, gentlemen. Thank hey. you for joining the Old Fashioned Podcast. Yep. Cheers. Cheers.